Buenas noches. Aquí es Cyber Dragon. Y vamos a guardar este este testeo de la última versión de la Open Beta de, de ese Word. Que parece que han mejorado eh, varias de las misiones. Vamos a ver. Ramplar Autobombs. Vale, no me he dado cuenta que he desajustado los controles. Thank you, Isme. Sorry by, by the delay. I need a SSD to improve the loading times. Always the first, the first time has very slow. Okay.
The third bombing mode to discuss is automatic or auto bombing. This is similar to a mode you may be familiar with in the A-10C called CCRP mode. It allows accurate delivery of weapons based on designated target point. This target point can be a waypoint, designated on the HUD, or set with another sensor. Today, we'll look at setting up a target point using a waypoint in the HUD, then we will deliver a bomb in that location. The big advantage of auto mode is that you can deliver a bomb in level flight and is most often used for guided bombs like laser and GPS guided systems. However, you can still use it for unguided bombs. First, press the AG master mode button or two. Looking at the left DDI, you see we have four Mark 84 2000 pound bombs under our four wing stations. Select 84 by pressing push button six. Ha. Along the left side of the format page at push button 5 is the bombing mode selection. Press this now. Select auto mode by pressing push button 5. We'll set the fuse now by first pressing M fuse on push button 4. Next, select a nose fuse by pressing push button 4. We will just drop one bomb at a time, so we don't need to fiddle with further bomb program options. The first way we'll learn to set a target or TGT point to drop a bomb on is by setting a waypoint to be a target point. On the lower center MPCD, select waypoint to set this as our navigation steer to source. If you wish, you can press backspace to hide the control stick. Next, press the push button next to the up arrow to select waypoint one. We now have waypoint 1 selected as our navigation point. Press the WPDSG push button to set it as your target. Upon doing so, your waypoint navigation number changed to TGT on the HSI and a diamond is now on the HUD heading tape. The diamond indicates the direction to the target. On the right side of the HUD is also the auto bombing designation with the time to release or REL below it. Below that is range to the target as nautical miles and TGT. In this case, 17 TGT. Running down the HUD is the azimuth steering line, or ASL. This indicates the azimuth you need to fly to reach the target. Along the ASL is the pull-up cue, which appears as a horizontal line with what appears to be upturned wings on the ends. If the velocity vector is below the pull-up cue, you will see the brake X. At the bottom of the HUD is a diamond, and this marks the line of sight to the target. When the target is outside the HUD field of view, it will flash. Additionally, near the top center is your target pointer, which points towards the off-HUD target and a numeric above it, indicating the degrees off. When you are ready, press spacebar, and I will unpause the lesson. Mm, we'll now attempt an auto-bombing delivery against the target located at waypoint 1. Fly to place the velocity vector on the ASL and fly level. Keep your sí. speed between 450 and 500 knots. Note the. Un segundo que tengo que, co que configurar los controles. Tengo que configurar los Ariel. controles porque se me acaban de desconfigurar y no me había dado cuenta. Y ahora, claro, el problema es tener lo que hacer esto en directo. Y esto es. Eh, como digo yo, un, una cortada de... de mucho cuidado. Ya deberían coger IED y tenerlo configurado como el... como el A10. Vale, y la palanca de man, la palanca de Timón de dirección. Vale. Y los pre... 
แน่นอนเฟรนอฟเฟรนอฟเฟรนอฟคอนโทรลเดอะเฟรนอฟเฟรนอฟเฟรนอฟโรดิสคิร์ดโอเค time to release and TGT target range decrease as we close the range to the target use smooth control inputs to keep the velocity vector over the ASL don't ham fist it At about four miles from the target, a horizontal bar called the release cue appears on the ASL. This drops down the ASL as you close to the target. Hold down the weapon release button or right alt and spacebar key until the release cue passes through the velocity vector. When this happens, the bomb is automatically released. The more accurate you are in keeping the velocity vector over the ASL at time of release will affect bomb accuracy. Try to be wings level and holding a steady airspeed. This will allow the weapon system to calculate an accurate release point. A lower altitude can also increase auto bomb accuracy. If your first bomb fails to destroy one of the targets, try again until you do. Me imagino que el botón de lanzamiento no va a funcionar. No, bomba, no hay bombas en camino. Jolín. Ay. Esto me pasa por tocar los controles. Tocar los controles. Ay. Control de armas. Ah, no, palanca de gases, jolín. Palanca de gases. Jolín. Botón de bloqueaje, desbloqueaje. Vale, elevación, opción de selección FOI del FLIR. Interruptor de comunicaciones con uno, con dos. Buah. Esto va a ser un vacilón. Los exteriores off Trutor de los fenómenos no. extender no retraer Interruptor de dispersador, vale, pero es que el dispersador no lo tiene. Encenador palanca de gases. Vale. Esto debería ser un, un eje. Esto debería ser un eje. Esto debería ser un eje. Esa desviación horizontal vertical. Hmm. Oh. Va a ver. 
Empuñadura del mando de gases. Especial para joystick. No. Palanca de control, jolín. Botella de asientos de armas. No. Esta. Este ascensor. Gatillo del cañón. Segunda. Este. Tractor de compensador. Vale, pero es que el compensador no puede palanca de mando. Piloto automático. Amarran. Amarran. Las armas. Esto lo estoy configurando más mal que el carajo. Botón de asignación, dirección de la rueda del morro. Aquí. Este. RC no está. Bueno, vamos a... Aire tierra, hombre de Dios, aire tierra. 84. Unguided bombs in auto mode is certainly not the ideal delivery method, but it can be useful at night or bad weather. I'm going to pause the lesson again so we can talk about auto bombing using the HUD to designate a target. First, press the undesignated button, or S, to release waypoint 1 as our TGT location. In order to designate a ground location as the target through the HUD, press forward on the sensor select switch or press right alt and semicolon to set the throttle designator control control of the HUD. This is indicated by the dot in the center of the velocity vector. Claro. Pero... Right arm más. When in auto HUD bombing mode, we have a reticle consisting of 12 hash marks. Between this reticle and the velocity vector is a dashed line. This line and reticle are referred to as the ball and chain. On the right side of the HUD, we have the auto mode indication. Located at waypoint 2 is a second set of target trucks that will attack. Select the next waypoint on the HSI. Voy pando. 
slide to bring Waypoint 2 into your HUD field of view and note that the targets are marked with blue smoke. Fly to place the center of the reticle over the center of the target group and press the weapon release button or press enter. Once the location is designated, a dashed diamond marks the location and an ASL appears on the HUD. From here, the bombing delivery is just like we performed using a target waypoint. Fly to place the velocity vector on the ASL and hold down the weapon release button or right alt and spacebar as the weapon release cue passes through the velocity vector. If you wish to refine the location of the diamond, you can slew it using the TDC cursor or the comma, period, backslash, and semicolon keys. Try it out. Remember, to clear a designation, press the undesignated button or press S. Vale, runs away. No, iría demasiado rápido tal vez. Buena, ¿qué tal es ver aquí? Deja ver si después hago algo otro. Ah, 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 vale, pero el de un designate es este. Bueno, aquí vamos como de costumbre. Ya, a ver, eh, voy a estar aquí una, haciendo unas cuantas misiones y después entro por el otro lado. Demasiado bajo. Estoy demasiado bajo. Vamos a dar la vuelta para la contraria. Claro, a medida que añaden más cosas, pues hay que... Vale. ¿Por qué no Altitude. me digo? Altitude. Joder, no me deja... Ah. 
Dale, con ese güey. Entonces será que se está poniendo interesante la situación. Siguiente misión. Seguramente han configurado otras cuestiones. Creo que el Aito Air. Creo que también lo habían mejorado. Los modos de radar. Que no lo tengo configurado. Welcome to this training lesson on the use of the Hornet's M61A2 20mm cannon. Mounted on the nose of the aircraft, it can be loaded with up to 578 rounds and has a firing rate of either 4,000 or 6,000 rounds per minute. When too close for missiles, the gun is a great option in a dogfight. I currently have the lesson paused as we talk about the AA Same. gun system. Press spacebar to continue. To start, Let's first get the AA gun set up. The easiest way to do this is by simply pressing aft on the weapon select switch or press left shift and X. Please do so now. With the AA gun selected, note that the master mode was automatically set to AA. The left DDI displays the AA gun format. The HUD is in the gun auto acquisition mode and the right DDI is in the AA radar page with air combat maneuvering mode selected. Let's first take a closer look at the AA gun format page on the left DDI. Above the wing form, you see the number of gun rounds remaining, 578, and below that you see the state of the master arm switch. On the left side of the page, you have the gun round type selection of M50 or PGU-28. You want to make sure that this selection matches what you have loaded on the aircraft. Press the M50 push button to select M50 round. In the bottom of the left format are push buttons for high and low gun fire rate. Low fires the gun at 4,000 rounds per minute and high fires the gun at 6,000 rounds per minute. Select the high option. With no radar lock on the target, you will use the lead computing optical sight, also called the funnel. Simply put, 
With a wingspan entered, you will fly your Hornet to place the wingtips of the target's aircraft just touching the sides of the funnel. When they are, you have a good firing solution to hit the target. To enter the correct target wingspan, press the UFC push button. Our target aircraft will be a MiG-29 with a wingspan of approximately 37 feet. The top option select window is marked WSPN for wingspan. Press the option select button to the left. This will allow us to enter a target wingspan. On the UFC keypad, type in 37 and then press enter on the UFC keypad. Press spacebar when done. With that done, you will now note that the WSPN or wingspan indication in the top right portion of the AA gun format page displays 037 to the right. Now let's take a look at the HUD. Currently, you are in the gun auto acquisition mode. This is indicated by the large dashed circle on the HUD. Also note that the selected weapon, gun, indicated near the bottom center of the HUD and the number of rounds remaining below it. To lock up a target, simply fly to place your target within five miles inside the dashed circle. Until you have a target locked though, you can use the gun funnel. In addition to the gun auto acquisition mode, you also have the Boresight BST, Vertical VACQ, and Wide WACQ Air Combat Maneuvering ACM modes. But we will talk about those in a separate lesson. When you are ready, press spacebar and I will unpause the lesson. Ahead of you are two drone MiG-29s. Place them within the dash circle on the HUD to lock one of them up. Upon doing so, you now have some new information on the HUD for a locked target. You have your VC closure, velocity and target range below it on the right side of the HUD. The locked target has a target designation box or diamond around it, and an aiming reticle with a pipper in the center. Along the outside of the aiming reticle is a line that indicates maximum gun range. Fly to place the pipper in the center of the aiming reticle over the target and pull the trigger when the target is within range. When the pipper is over the target and within range, a shoot cue will appear over the target. To unlock the target, press the undesignated button on your stick, or press S. Good job. Now splash the second drone. Flash 2. Great job using the AA gun. This is a great weapon in close and win Winchester on missiles. Press escape to end the lesson. Ahora si. Ahora si. Ah, pasó por encima.
Bueno, vamos a ver la siguiente. Han ido cambiando cositas. Hmm. Say with you. Está tardando más, seguramente hay más carga. In this lesson, we'll learn about how to use the AIM-9L and M versions of the venerable Sidewinder short-range infrared guided air-to-air -air missile. Using a cooled infrared seeker, the Sidewinder locks onto the hot elements of a target, most often the engines. Best used in close-range dogfights, the Sidewinder is a fire and forget after launch. However, the Sidewinder can be decoyed by flares and is less effective against ground clutter. Today we're looking at the L and M versions. The AIM-9L, or Lima, entered production in 1977 and was the first all-aspect homing sidewinder, meaning it could get a lock on a target at any aspect angle. However, a rear aspect provides much better detection. The Mike, or AIM-9M, is an improved version of the Lima with better flare rejection and a reduced smoke motor. In a later lesson, we'll take a look at the AIM-9X and the joint helmet mounted queuing system. The Sidewinder can be used on both boresight mode and slaved to a radar lock target. I currently have the lesson paused as we discuss some of its features. To select a Sidewinder, press down on the weapon select switch or press left shift and S. Do this now. When selected with no target locked on radar, the Sidewinder will be in boresight mode. This is indicated by the single reticle on the HUD that indicates the seeker line of sight. Below on the HUD, you will notice the name of the weapon, 9M in this case, and the number of missiles remaining to the right. 
To employ a Sidewinder in this mode, fly your Hornet to place the reticle over a target and wait for the Seeker tone to change to a higher pitch. This indicates the Seeker sees and is tracking the target. You could then launch the missile by pulling the trigger or pressing the spacebar. To allow the Seeker to self-track the target, press the Cage Uncage button on your throttle or press C when you hear the lock tone. Once self-tracking, the Seeker will automatically follow the target within its Seeker field of regard. Before trying this though, let's first take a closer look at the AIM-9 format page on the left DDI. Press space. As with the AA gun, you have the remaining gun rounds and master arm indications. Along the wing form are indications for AIM-9 loading. 9L indicates stations with AIM-9L and 9M indicates stations with AIM-9M. The selected station includes an SEL for selected below it. To cycle through AIM-9 stations, press the AIM-9 select switch on the weapon select switch, or press left shift S. This allows you to switch between AIM-9L and AIM-9M versions. When you are ready, press spacebar and I will unpause the lesson. You now have two MiG-29 drone targets ahead of you. Fly to place the reticle over one of them until you hear a higher pitched lock tone. You can either launch an AIM-9 now by pressing the trigger on the stick or spacebar on the keyboard, or initiate a self-track by pressing the cage uncage button on the throttle or pressing C. Once self-tracking, launch an AIM-9. It may take more than one to bring down the MiG. Splash 1. Keep an eye on the second MiG-29 and follow it. We will use a radar slave to track for that one. Follow the second drone. To lock up the second drone on radar, press up on the sensor select switch or press right alt and semicolon. This will place the radar in air combat maneuvering or ACM mode. Keep following the second drone. When ACM mode is first selected, the boresight auto acquisition mode is selected. This is indicated by the dashed circle on the HUD. To lock up the target, fly to place the target within the dashed circle and have the target under 10 miles away. Fly to keep the target at about one mile to keep the radar lock. On the HUD is a large solid circle that acts as both the AIM-9 allowable steering error circle and as the normalized in-range display, or NERD circle. Fly to keep the small steering dot inside the circle to give the missile the best chance of reaching the target. Along the outside of the circle are two triangle NERD indications. The one at the six o'clock position is the missile maximum range also called R-Max, and the other is the missile minimum range, called R-Min. The line inscribing the circle indicates target range, and you want this between R-Max and R-Min to launch the missile. Also on the HUD is a box or diamond that indicates the line of sight to the locked target, and the smaller circle indicates the AIM-9 seeker line of sight. If you see a large X across the HUD in radar display, your range to the target is less than the minimum range indication. When the target is between R-Max and R-Min, the steering dot is inside the ASE circle, and the weapon is armed, the shoot cue will appear and you can launch the missile by pulling... Nice job! He downed the second drone! Some final thoughts on using the AIM-9. First, the seeker can better track a target from behind than in front. Second, if the target is expending flares, it may decoy your missile. Third, the AIM-9 does not have a large warhead so it may take more than one to bring down a target. Press escape to end the lesson. Okay. Y ya, alcance medio.
In this lesson, we'll explore employment of the Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, or AMRAAM. The AMRAAM replaced the older AIM-7 Sparrow with improved range, guidance, weight, and an embedded radar seeker in the nose cone. This allows the AMRAAM to guide on target without support from the host aircraft as the missile closes with the target. This in turn allows the launch aircraft to maneuver without loss of missile guidance to the target. The AMRAM can be queued to targets with the Hornet's radar, or it can be launched at a close range just using the missile's seeker. Deliveries of the AIM-120B began in 1994 and replaced the AIM-120A. The AIM-120C was fielded in 1996 and has clipped wings to support internal storage, improved target detection, and greater range. As with all air-to-air -air missiles, engagement range is highly dependent on engagement aspect, launch altitude, and launch speed. You will see much greater launch distances at 30,000 feet on a closing target than 5,000 feet on a receding target. I currently have the lesson paused. To select the AMRAM, press right on the weapon select switch or press left shift and D. Do this now. Let's first take a look at the AMRAM format page on the left DDI. In the top left corner of the DDI, at push button 6, is the size selection. By pressing on the push button, you have selections to set weapon fusing size to small, medium, and large sized targets. We'll be shooting down some drone MiG-29s, so select small. To the right of the size selection is the radar cross section or RCS selection. Upon pressing this push button, you have options to set the expected radar cross section of the target between small, medium, and large. Go ahead and set it to small. Along the right side of the DDI at push button 13 is the step push button. Successive presses cycle the selected AIM-120 stations. You can see AIM-120 loading on the wing form with AB for AIM-120B and AC for AIM-120C. The selected rail stations include the SEL indicator and dual rail stations with indications for right and left rail on the station. Press spacebar to continue. When we selected the AIM-120, we also set the radar on the right DDI to the AIM-120 default settings. These include a range scale of 40 miles, a two-bar scan, an azimuth of 140 degrees, and an interleaved PRF. Let's keep these as is. Press spacebar to continue. The large dashed circle is the most obvious indication of AMRAM selection. This indicates the seeker field of view if launched with no radar lock first. This is termed Mad Dog Launch, and the AMRAM will lock on to intercept the first target it detects within the dashed reticle area out to 10 miles. Below the dashed reticle is the designation for the selected weapon, AB for AIM-120B and AC for AIM-120C. Below that is a visual indication, meaning there is no radar lock, and if launched now, the missile would be in Mad Dog mode. Press spacebar and I'll add some drone targets. On the right DDI radar page, we see a target, or called a hit, on the radar. Let's lock it up by moving the throttle designator controller, or TDC, over it and locking it up. We do this by using the TDC switch on the throttle, or by pressing period, comma, backslash, and semicolon to slew it. Once the two vertical bars of the TDC are over the hit, 
press down on the TDC switch or press the enter button. Once the target is locked, press spacebar to continue. No lo tengo marcado. Y para que no me deja configurar el mando del el TDS. Qué raro. No me, no me deja configurar el TDS. ¿Por qué no? No. No, no puedo configurar el TDS. Y a ver, el de, la designación era... Botón 15, para el botón 15. Pues no lo sé. Porque es trotter, joystick. A ver. Blocaje de blocaje. Claro, tiene que ser un eje. Tiene que ser un eje. Mm. TDC. No, y aparece en oscuro. Bueno, no lo entiendo. With the target locked up, some new information is now available on the HUD. On the HUD is a large, solid circle that acts as both the AIM-120 allowable steering error circle and as the normalized in-range display or NERD circle. Fly to keep the small steering dot inside the circle to give the missile the best chance of reaching the target. Along the outside of the circle are three triangle NERD indications. The one at 6 o'clock position is the missile maximum range also called RMAX, counterclockwise from it is the no escape range, also called RNE. When target range is within RNE, the target could change course and the missile would still have the energy to reach the target. The third indication near the two o'clock position of the nerd circle is the missile minimum range, called RMIN. The line inscribing the circle indicates target range and you want this between RMAX and RMIN to launch the missile. Also on the HUD is a box or diamond that indicates the line of sight to the locked target. A box indicates a friendly target and a diamond indicates it as a hostile. If you see a large X across the HUD and radar display, your range to the target is less than the minimum range indication. 
When the target is between our max and our min, the steering dot is inside the ASC circle and weapon is armed, the shoot cue will appear and you can launch the missile by pulling the trigger on the stick or by pressing the spacebar. When between RNE and R min, the shoot indication will flash. Press spacebar to continue. Along the right side of the HUD are three lines of information. The top line is an indication of closure velocity, V sub C, and below that is target range in miles. Further down on the right side of the HUD is the timer field. When the locked target is outside the range of the AIM-120 radar seeker, the value will display the time from missile launch at which the AMRAM seeker will turn on and hunt down the target. This is shown as the time in seconds and then ACT. Once the range of the seeker in the AMRAM is less than approximately 10 miles, the time changes to time to go until the missile impacts the target. This is displayed as remaining time and then TTG. The ACT and TTG will be in reference to the last AIM-120 launched. When the target range is 15 miles, launch an AMRAM by pressing and holding the trigger. If the first does not succeed, try again. Splash one. Go ahead and lock up the target flying towards you and press spacebar. Don't engage it. If you don't see one on the radar, press the up arrow on the radar to increase its display range. Take a look at the air-to-air -air radar format on the right DDI. You'll note that much of the information on the HUD is duplicated there and includes an ASC circle, shoot cue, steering dot, and range indication as along the azimuth steering line to the target. The locked target has the antenna azimuth line running through it and has its speed as Mach to the left and its altitude to the right. The RMAX, RNE, and RMIN are displayed along the antenna azimuth line. When the AMRAM is launched, a triangular fly-out symbols appears on the azimuth steering line and travels to the target. Once the missile seeker is active, an A appears below the fly-out symbol. To break a lock, press the undesignated button on the stick or press S. Press spacebar to continue. As noted earlier, you can also use the AMRAM with no radar lock. Termed visual mode, simply fly to place a target within 10 miles inside the HUD reticle and launch the missile. The AMRAM will go after the first target it detects, hostile or friendly. Practice using the AIM-120 against the remaining drones and press escape when you wish to end the lesson.
a ver, ¿dónde están los otros? las misiones de entrenamiento y esperamos que poderle dar un poquito más mañana gracias a todos los que habéis seguido este stream y nos vemos un saludo